take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Looks like you took the red pill and uh, welcome to Wonderland. In this week's video we talk about Hegel versus extravasation in shoulder MR arthrography and this time we're gonna have a look at different cases, uh, real MR images and we go through several patients there and try to figure out whether the uh, ligaments are torn, whether we actually have a Hegel lesion or whether it's just an iatrogenic extravasation of gadolinium after arthrography. And uh, if you haven't watched part one, click here and watch that part first because it really gives you a nice summary over the literature and also the anatomy because I will not go back to that into too much detail. So go uh, watch that first and then come back to this video. Welcome back and before we start here is just a repetition of the anatomy. We have the anterior band, then we have the axillary pouch and the posterior band. So this is important to keep in mind throughout the cases. I have to start with a quick warning, there is some serious scrolling through images going on in this video. Let's have a look here at a case with normal anatomy. So you realize that we have T1 weighted sequences down here with fat saturation without and this is proton density weighted here with fat set, the other ones without. And let's have a look here at the T1 sequence here. So this is the glenoid, this is the humeral head subscapularis tendon and if we go down you can see these different bands here that are bridging between the humeral head all the way over to the glenoid so here 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 they are also easily visible on your coronals you can see these strands here tack 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 here they are and even on your axial you can see them if you scroll down you can start to see like starting off with little folds and here, this thick one here, is the anterior portion of the inferior glenohumeral ligament. The posterior portion is hard to see, probably here, part of this, and then this is just the fibers of the axillary pouch. And this is where you frequently have these little tears, where gadolinium can extravasate without having a Hegel lesion. And then, because you have these striations or septations or lobulations, whatever you want to call them, you might get the appearance here of a extravasation when in case it's not. So if you have a tear here, typically the contrast, as I have shown you in part one, goes down along the shaft and then also into all these different spaces between the muscles, etc., etc. So this is just the normal anatomy. Here again, nicely visible the anterior portion of the inferior glenohumeral ligament and probably this one part of the posterior one. And here, just to show you the anatomy in another patient again, here we have the anterior portion of the inferior glenohumeral ligament from the glenoid all the way over to the humeral head. Then we have these striations here and somewhere in the back we have the posterior portion. This is the anterior portion here and this is just the axillary pouch. This time without these septations or lobulations. So that's normal. Here is the first case, 20 year old woman with sudden pain after a acute lifting maneuver, so no real trauma in a sense, and following pain. And this was an MR arthrography. We have proton density weighted sequences up here and T1 fat rated down here. Let's jump right into it. So we can see that the injected gadolinium is leaking out here through the axillary recess into the surrounding soft tissues, a little bit into the quadrilateral space, a little bit between the muscles here and also along the shaft. So these were all signs in one of the studies that I have shown you in the first video that might lead you to the diagnosis of a Hegel lesion. The other thing is the J sign. Um, so it's anteriorly. It's an avulsion of the inferior glenohumeral ligament and that is the anterior portion. So basically here is anterior. We have the coracoid here. So we are looking for a J-like structure here and if you ask me, I can always imagine some kind of a J at this location. So I don't think it's a really, really helpful sign. But I think one of the easiest way is also to look at your sagittal views. So this is the sagittal T1 fat saturated sequence. Let me make this a little bit bigger. This on your left is anterior and on your right is posterior. This is the coracoid process, the glenoid. And now let's just try to figure out where is the anterior 
bundle of the inferior glenohumeral ligament. For reference, I have here the axials and we put in a localizer. So let's start with the superior glenohumeral ligament. We know that it's just anterior and part of the pulley here around the biceps tendon, so it's around here. If you want to know more about the biceps pulley anatomy, go watch the video in the link in your upper right corner right now. So we have it here, then we move along and we can see here, this structure here is the middle glenohumeral ligament and if you want to see where this is on your axils, you can see we have it right here. This is the middle glenohumeral ligament here. So, and now we go one step down and you can see here and I will put in the image from the anatomy a section of my first video for reference and this is the anterior bundle of the inferior glenohumeral ligament so we have the glenoid we have the ligament running over to the humeral head this is the anterior one so this looks pretty okay now let's see whether we can see this on our axials as well and here it is so this ligament here this is the anterior inferior glenohumeral ligament attaching still onto the humerus what you might imagine as a JSON here is just soft tissue and uh, the joint capsule of the axillary pouch and not really a true Hegel lesion with an avulsion of this anterior bundle of the inferior glenohumeral ligament rather. So, but we can still see this leakage here and this patient actually went on to arthroscopy and they had a look down here and the surgeon wrote in his report that there was a three millimeter tiny defect in the axillary pouch. So somewhere in this region where we had the leakage of the contrast, but not a true Hegel lesion in that sense. So again, um, I reference to the other study that mentioned that if you only have an exervasation in the posterior portion of the axillary pouch, then it's most likely or in nearly all cases, a iatrogenic exervasation. And you can see here, this is anteriorly. So anteriorly it's fine we don't have any leakage here now the leakage is really happening in the posterior portion of the axillary pouch so this is still portion of the anterior pouch this is the posterior pouch and we have the leakage here so that's another reason why this is just an iatrogenic extravasation and not a true Hegel lesion as confirmed by arthroscopy this week I have one new patron and that is Arthur. Hi Arthur, thanks for your support, it's really really appreciated and that makes it 24 supporters right now so it's really great, better than expected and um, if you want to know more about Patreon and how you can support this channel go check the link somewhere down here and also in the description below and you can see the list of patrons now right here just next to me and it's really a group of amazing people that like what I do and want to support it and keep me going. So thanks a lot to all of you guys and I really have exciting things coming up for next year and more on that soon. This is another case and here was the MR report suggesting a Hegel lesion. Now let's have a look. First of all this patient had a severe trauma. We have this fracture here but that's not the topic of today's video. We can see a little bit of edema around the joint capsule. This is the injected gadolinium. This is a proton density weighted sequence. This is the only T1 weighted sequence and you can see everything is still contained. So first of all, we don't really have an extravasation, so that would render a Hegel lesion unlikely. And uh, let's try whether we can see some kind of a J. So this is anteriorly, oh, this might look like a strange J, um, but again, I don't think that this is a Hegel lesion. Let's have a look at the middle glenohumeral ligament which is this structure here and here this is the anterior bundle or anterior portion of the inferior glenohumeral ligament originating from the glenoid running across over to the humerus. And it's quite frequent that you see these bent like structures on your sagittals. Uh, this is probably a part of the inferior portion and in between we have the axillary pouch and we don't really see a leakage of contrast but there is some edema uh, probably related to the trauma, but not through a exervasation or a Hegel lesion. This is the next case and we will start off with, with this sequence. It's proton density weighted, but you can see we have some exervasation here. 
This is the T1 weighted sequence, so it's really contrast going out here into the periarticular soft tissues, not really into the quadrilateral space, but it's leaking somewhere. And let's see whether we can see these different ligaments. So here we can see a portion of the posterior bundle of the inferior glenohumeral ligament. And let's see whether we can see the anterior portion. So this is probably part of the anterior portion. And we don't really see a J, but if you will, this is a J. This might be part of a J. So you will always see the J. So be very mindful of when to call a Hegel lesion. So let's see whether we can see the anterior portion. I think it's this one here. What you can do is you go up, you look for the middle glenohumeral ligament. Uh, it's probably better visible here. And then we have this structure here, this band-like structure here. And if we correlate this, then we can see that this is actually here, this portion here, and it's not a valst. So what actually is happening, we have a leakage somewhere, maybe in the posterior portion of the axillary pouch, and that would be consistent with an iatrogenic exervasation. In this patient, someone suspected a Hegel lesion on this MRI. However, let's have a look at the anatomy here. First of all, we can see we have a very thin middle glenohumeral ligament here. That's okay. And here we can already see the anterior portion of the inferior glenohumeral ligament. And I think if you watch only this, it looks like a J. So this can look like a J if you flip it around. And you might think that we have a defect here and sometimes you see these lobulations. And it's important to realize that this is not the attachment that should belong up here. It's just like a fold in the axillary pouch. So this is one of the pitfalls. And if we go on the back, we can see it's all attaching there nicely. So always scroll through and don't fall for some partial volume artifacts. And if we go anteriorly, we can see it's everything attaching nicely there. On the axials, you can see we have the MG, MGHL going downwards. We can start to see the anterior portion again here. So it's still inserting. It's not a Hegel lesion. Okay. This is just this septation or the lobulation of the axillary pouch, which should not be mistaken as a exervasation or a Hegel lesion. Very important here. So this is no exervasation. And here on your sagittal is a T1 fat saturated sequence. You can really nicely see these bands here. So I'll keep always a lookout for these. This is the port of the anterior portion here. This one here, it's still nice and intact. And this one is part of the posterior portion, most likely this one here. And this is the axillary pouch. And then we have some septations or lobulations or whatever you want to call them. And it's nice and smooth, nothing running down into the quadrilateral space or between the musculature, so normal. This is, by the way, a nice example of an aponeurotic expansion of the supraspinatus tendon here. You can see this structure here originating from the supraspinatus tendon. Let me make this big. So this structure here running parallel to the biceps tendon. So this is not an accessory biceps tendon. It's an aponeurotic expansion of the supraspinatus tendon. And if you want to know more about it, I made a video. You will see the link in your upper right corner right now. This patient came to us and had the report of a Hegel lesion on MRI. There is even an arrow. Now let's see whether that is true or not. First of all, we have the T1 weighted sequences down here. And as we have learned so far, we can see the anterior portion of the inferior glenohumeral ligament here with intact bands to the humeral head running over to the glenoid. So this one is certainly intact. Let's see whether we can see a J sign. So this is anteriorly. Everything looks smooth here. This is the glen um, inferior glenohumeral ligament. Hmm. Now, you can think this maybe is part of it. This one is the J, but it's just a synthriation or lobulation. And this is not enough to warrant a diagnosis of a Hegel lesion. This is just like a little bit normal. Maybe it's a little bit exercisation, but where is it? That's the key question here. We can see here, anterior, posterior, 
axillary pouch and if it's leaking a little bit it's in the posterior portion and as we have learned in the literature then it's in 100% of the cases a extravasation. So no Hegel lesion again this is the posterior portion, anterior portion. The image in this example are just proton density weighted images because the T1 weighted are ugly to look at and what you can see here nevertheless is an extravasation of gadolinium uh, into the soft tissue here into the quadrilateral space and between the muscles etc etc so we have already a high suspicion of a Hegel lesion and now let's go to the anterior portion here is the coracoid process and then we should see the anterior portion here and what we can see is some frayed edges here um, let's see whether we can see a J yeah there is always somewhere a J it's not so important but let's have a look at the other planes as well so here it is let's go to the glenoid side we can see the middle glenohumeral ligament and we don't really see this thick ligament nicely attaching here so it's likely torn and also we don't have extravasation only in the posterior portion of the axillary pouch but also in the anterior portion so this is another sign that this is a true Hegel lesion and not just an iatrogenic extravasation we can also have a look here at the axials scrolling down now and you can see it's all frayed up here and it's probably a wall stair I don't know about the story of this patient I'm afraid but uh, I would say that this is a Hegel lesion so what did we learn this week? Basically not every extravasation is a Hegel lesion and you frequently see an iatrogenic extravasation. However, there is a caveat that even if you have an iatrogenic extravasation, you might still find some tiny little tears in the axillary pouch of the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex. And I think that's another um, takeaway message that you can use the term inferior glenohumeral ligament complex, which also comprises the anterior and the posterior bundle and also the axillary pouch and really try to reserve the term Hegel for the evulsions of the anterior or the posterior uh, bundle there. I'm curious about your approach here so comment below if you have any suggestions or if you have any questions with uh, Hegel or extravasation uh, for this video here and if you liked the video hit the like button and also make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and with that see you next week. Thank you